Hello, I'm Dr. Clement Shimizu of the Illuminati. In this video, we are going to demonstrate how easy it is to incorporate Omnity 2 into your Unity 3D project. Omnity 2 is a Unity 3D class for projection mapping inside of immersive environments. We will use the CARS tutorial that you can download for free from the Asset Store. You don't need to program to use Omnity but you do need a copy of Unity 3D Pro. The free version will not work. If you don't have Pro yet, you can download a 30-day trial from Unity. Here we have the CARS tutorial project loaded. As you can see, it is a complete project that includes a driving course with a scenic view, a beautiful sky, shadows, a car, and the scripts to control the simulation and finally, a chase camera, which chases the car from about five or 10 meters. It's important to recognize the implications of this design choice because when we omnify this application, the rendering will happen from the perspective of the chase camera, which may or may not be what you want. In the end, I'll demonstrate how to disable the chase camera but for now, let's jump in. Omnity 2 comes as a single C-sharp file that you attach to your main camera. The majority of our effort in creating Omnity 2 was applied to making it effortless for you, the developer, to integrate into your project. There are no DLLs, shaders, or config files that you need to add to your project. Here, I copy the Omnity script into the project locate the main camera, and attach the Omnity script onto the camera. If you open the inspector, you can see the exposed options and even drill into the settings. There are a ton of options hiding in there, but don't worry about it. The built-in projection mapping configuration is set for a geodome theater, but that can be changed at runtime, even after the project is compiled. The developer can focus on developing the application without having to make multiple versions for differing display types. It's all handled by Omnity at runtime. Once running, Omnity loads the configuration. In this case, it's using the built-in theater config. Then, it expands itself into a set of perspective cameras, a screen surface, and a final pass camera that generates the image for the fisheye video projector. You can actually see all of this floating in place of the game's main camera, which has been automatically disabled by Omnity. Although this image being produced right now looks totally distorted, it will look prospectively correct when projected through a fisheye lens onto a dome surface. You may notice that the image itself is truncated and offset. This is because we often mount our fisheye lenses offset so as to get the brightest, sharpest image and project it only where it's needed. In this project, the chase camera is floating too high above the object and needs to be tilted down so we can see the car. The bracket keys are a quick way to tilt the camera. While the game is running, use the bracket keys to find a good tilt. It looks like 24 is a good number. We can set the default tilt to be 24 while the game is stopped, so when we run it again, it starts at a nice angle. It's looking better, but I'm noticing a jarring issue. The camera is vibrating and the car looks like it's shaking almost every other frame. Experienced Unity developers may recognize this issue as an update order problem in where Two scripts, update functions, are writing to a transform in an ill-defined order. We have a setting to set when Omnity does its thing. This can be update, which is the earliest, late update, which is next, and is the default, and end of frame, which is last. You can also set none and then write your own script to call update at a precise time. But in this case, it looks like end of frame fixes the bug. 
the camera movement looks smooth. We got rid of the jitter. Remember to adjust this setting while the game is stopped. Now that the game is looking good, it's time to make a build. Our plugin works with OS X, Windows Standalone, and Web Player. The build process's output creates just the bare minimums, the application's .exe file, and the data folder. There are no DLLs or anything else needed there. When we run the game, you can see that it is defaulting to the built-in configuration, and it is using the custom tilt we set. If we press Shift F12, we can see that all of the settings that were in the inspector are available at runtime, including tilt. The bracket keys work for tilt, but if you want to save the tweak settings, you can scroll back up to the top and press save. At this point, you will notice that a new directory called Illuminati Omnity is spontaneously created with an XML file that represents the configuration at the time it was generated. The tilt settings are also in there along with many other settings that control the way the image is rendered. In this case, it represents a generic theater config. If we want to load up a different configuration, for example, a full dome theater, all we need to do is replace this XML file with the configuration file that's desired. Here I'm going to drag in a full dome theater configuration into the folder. Pressing F12 will reload the configuration file. Here we can see the full dome theater in action. In many situations, the goal is to create an environment for the player to be immersed in, like the holodeck from Star Trek. Since a chase camera breaks the illusion by providing an external view of the player's avatar, we need to replace the chase camera with a first-person camera that provides a truly immersive experience. To do this, we simply disable Omnity in the main camera, and create a new game object inside of the car. I'm going to reset the transform so its local position is zero relative to the car. Now we add Omnity. When we run the game, we notice that the camera is way too low. All we can see is the wheels and not much else. If we set Y to 1, the camera is inside the car cabin, but we have an obstructed view. If we set Y to 2, then we have a clear view, but it's way above the car. That's not good either. Really what we want is a view that simulates the driver's view without the obstruction. To do this, I'm going to position the camera inside the car cabin, but disable the mesh renderers on the car. I'm just going to start clicking on car parts and then disable the renderers one by one.
the colliders are still there to crash into things so the the game object will still interact with the environment we're just making the object invisible at this point we have a really nice first person perspective if you enjoyed this tutorial there will be many more on the way showing advanced usages of Omnity. I'll describe other types of projection mapping and how to do it. I've seen so many cool Unity 3D games and I just can't wait to see your games in an immersive environment.